this is the last video for chapter four on igneous rocks and processes. Um, so let's finish it. Chapter four. Next thing we want to talk about is there are four different kinds of volcanoes. Composite volcanoes, shield volcanoes, cinder cones, and lava domes. We're going to talk about the four kinds. You need to be able to know the difference between them and what types of igneous rocks they form. Another thing that is important to note is that some people call composite volcanoes stratovolcanoes. I guess it's about 50-50. Some people use composite, some people use stratovolcanoes, but it means the same thing. Okay, let's take a look at the difference here. Here's a picture showing you, first of all, the sizes of the different volcanoes. The biggest volcanoes are shield volcanoes. Second biggest are composite volcanoes. The third biggest are cinder cones, and the fourth are lava domes. I sent you a video about Mount St. Helens, which erupted back in 1980. That's a composite volcano. A composite volcanoes are your killer volcanoes. Uh, Pompeii, that erupted in 79 AD, was a composite volcano. Pinatubo in the Philippines, which erupted back in 2005 as a composite volcano. Composite volcanoes are formed at subduction zones. You need to remember that. The, the violent, dangerous volcanoes are formed at subduction zones. And, the, and um, the reason why that is, is because when continental lithosphere collides with oceanic lithosphere, it subducts. Continental lithosphere is more felsic. That means it's silica rich. So this silica rich lava and magma rises to the surface. And silica rich magma, please remember this, is has a higher viscosity. Viscosity. You might have learned about that in chemistry class or physics. Viscosity is a resistance to flow. What is going to be more viscous, do you think? Molasses or water? Molasses, because molasses has a higher resistance to flow. What's going to be more viscous? Hot molasses or cold molasses? Cold molasses. These composite volcanoes are so dangerous because the magma is more viscous and when it becomes lava it's even more viscous as it's both cooler felsic magmas are cooler and they contain more silica so they're more viscous and so what they do is they hold gases like carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide in until they reach explosive proportions and then there's an eruption um, if you hold the bubbles in then the bubbles will produce a great internal pressure. When you were a little kid, think about this. Um, when Did you ever have a brother or sister that you just played this thing with, uh, like prank on? You take a bottle of soda and you shake it, and you leave the cap on, of course. And what happens when your brother or sister opens that cap? It explodes out. That's the way composite volcanoes are. They're so viscous due to their high silica concentration, their lower temperatures, that the gases are held until they reach explosive proportions. Composite volcanoes are very, very dangerous. They kill many people. Um, and let me show you some of the threats associated with compo uh, composite volcanoes. The first is called Nue Ardent. What does Nue Ardent mean? Uh, C'est un mot français. It's, these are French words, that, but we use them in the English-speaking world. as uh, So, nuée, if you're studying French, you probably know, means glowing. Ardent means a cloud. Nuée ardent kill people. And these clouds of gas and ash move down 
slope from these composite volcanoes at speeds approaching 200 miles an hour, 150 to 200 miles an hour. They come down and they fry everything in their path. Everything in their path is destroyed. That's what killed all those people in Pompeii when you saw all those bodies that were frozen into ash. Many people have been killed by Nuit Ardant. The other thing that kills people from these um, composite volcanoes are Lapilli bombs, blocks, and ash even. Let's take a look at the difference. Um, when a composite volcano blows up, chunks of rock, bowling ball size, boulder size, and ash size. Ash has about the consistency of flour. Shoot out in all directions. I'm going to show you a picture of what the, some of this stuff looks like. Oh, good Lord. Why, why don't you just show me the picture here? Let's see. Okay, I guess they're going to just make me download the picture. Um, okay, so these are called pyroclastic materials. They're shot out from composite volcanoes. Bombs look like this, and, when, and they could be bowling ball size, or they could be 10 feet long. But they are from lava that cools in midair and becomes streamlined. These are called bombs. Blocks are, are chunks or fragments that are huge. Uh, they could be two feet across, they could be 50 feet across. And um, these explosions shoot these bombs and blocks out in all directions. Obviously, if you're close to the eruption site, get hit by one of these, you, you'll get killed. Your vehicle will be destroyed, your house will be destroyed. Um, then you got these things called lapilli, L-A-P-I-L-L-I. -L -L -I. Lapilli is an Italian word. Let's see. And the lapilli um, are these little pieces of lava, everything from about pea size to walnut size. And they shoot out, millions of these shoot out in each direction. Um... Let me show you what they look like. They look like this. I like it when they put coins in there so you can see how big these things are. Um, a lot of times people will get killed by these. If you're sitting in a vehicle a mile or five miles away, uh, uh, you can get killed by these. Um, I, I saw pictures of people um, who got killed by Lapilli at Mount St. Helens. Their cars were miles away from the eruption, but they look like they got hit by a, a gangland hit in uh, the 1920s uh, from the Mafia. I mean, bodies uh, over steering wheels, and it looked like bullet holes in the car. Best way I could put it is, uh, as a former artillery man, when I was in the Army, there's something called shrapnel. Shrapnel is when an artillery shell or a mortar shell explodes, little chunks of metal are shot out in all directions, killing the enemy or wounding them. Well, that's what lapilli is like. And then, ash. The ash itself is not going to kill you. The ash looks like powder. And billions of tons of this is, are sent out in all directions from large composite volcanic eruptions. But the ash, when it mixes with water, let's say there's a heavy rainfall uh, after the volcanic eruption, or let's say snow on top of the composite volcano melts and mixes with the ash, then you make a lahar. This is a Spanish word, L A. H A R, and this mud will pour down the sides of these composite vol volcanoes, burying everybody in, in their path, burying houses, burying people. In 1985, in Colombia, uh, a little town called Almero was buried by a lahar, a mud flow, uh, a, 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 this viscous, not real viscous, but more viscous than water. It's ash mixed with water, covers everything. 
Um, to give you an idea, I have a town of 25,800 people. More than 25,000 were killed by that lahar. L-A-H-A-R. That's what the danger when ashes mixes with water. After a heavy rain, after the volcanic eruption, you get a rainfall, and then everything comes down. These mud flows pour down the sides of the mountains. You can see that uh, these people actually survived it, uh, but many other people were buried in that mud. So those are some of the threats associated with composite volcanoes. Composite volcanoes are your killer volcanoes. Other things include those gases can be poor, can kill you too. Those volcanic gases, when they get released, they can kill you as well. Um, carbon dioxide, if it builds up, um, you will suffocate. You can't breathe. Or if sulfur dioxide mixes with water, it can make sulfuric acid, and just uh, which will go right through skin and bone. So composite volcanoes are your killer volcanoes. Please don't forget they're formed at subduction zones, um, such as the one off of Oregon, which produced Mount St. Helens. We need to carefully monitor composite volcanoes. Volcanologists are people who specialize in monitoring the, the volcano so we can warn the public before a major volcanic eruption occurs. 2005, Mount Pinatubo erupted in the Philippines. We, we used to have an Air Force base there called Clark Air Force Base, and there was also a Marine base at Subic Bay. Well, U.S. Army volcanologists predicted that volcanic eruption, and they saved the lives of everybody on those military bases and many of the local Filipinos. Um, they heeded the warning, and they got out in time because we knew that volcano was going to erupt. That's the job of a volcanologist. One of the jobs of a volcanologist is to warn the public before the next volcanic eruption. Mount St. Helens is going to erupt again. And it might do so in the near future. There's a lot of evidence to indicate that it's about to erupt again. We need to be able to warn the public before that happens. Shield volcanoes are different than composite volcanoes. Composite volcanoes, as I mentioned before, are felsic. So you're going to produce rhyolite and andesite at subduction zones. But shield volcanoes are a different animal. Have any of you all been to Hawaii? If you go to Hawaii, you can see a shield volcano. Um, they actually have tours. Um, shield volcanoes are not dangerous. Almost nobody gets killed by shield volcanoes. Why? Because the lava that erupts from a shield volcano is of low viscosity. Low viscosity. It flows more like water. So that means the gases can come out instead of reaching explosive proportions and having this big explosion. Instead, the gases slowly come out. So it's, you get these rivers of lava that flow in Hawaii. And uh, the Hawaiians almost never get killed by this. Even the tourists don't get killed because you know not to walk near that river of lava. It is a very high temperature. And note something. Please remember. Look at the island of Hawaii. What color is it? What color is the rock? It's black. It's mafic. That means um, the rock that is formed by these shield volcanoes is basalt. So shield volcanoes do not kill people unless you are stupid enough to stand right next to it and fall into it. Some people have done that, but uh, we know where those rivers of lava are. You just don't walk near them. You get lava fountains. You can see fountains of lava. Other things that uh, get formed, and you'll see this when you go to Hawaii. Um, there's two Hawaiian words, and they're the only two Hawaiian words you need to remember for this class. A-A, A-A, and pohoihoi. These are two words that all Hawaiians know. A-A, pohoihoi. 
these are features formed at shield volcanoes. Ah, uh, ah, uh, and pohoihoi. So, when the test comes around, don't forget composite volcanoes. Think of lahars and lapilli and bombs and blocks and ash, explosive re eruptions, felsic eruptions, high viscosity. Shield volcanoes, think about lava rivers and, and lakes of lava and l lava fountains. And these features are like ah ah. So, this is ah ah. It, you can see it's mafic. It's black in color, iron magnesium rich. And these form jagged shards. They, they can totally to give you an idea how sharp the rock is there. Um, if you were to buy uh, some brand new field boots and walk over this ah uh, ah, it would tear them apart after about an hour. It, that's how sharp the rocks are. Uh, and if you walk on it, it'll cut right through your into your bone, through your feet. So you don't want to walk on an ah uh ah. -uh. Ah uh, happens after the the basaltic lava uh, um, degasses. So once the gas comes out of the basaltic lava, you form this ah uh, uh further down slope. And you also want to know what pohoihoi is. Pohoihoi translated into English. Oh, by the way, ah, uh, uh, translating to English is a painful surface to walk on, but pohoihoi, translating to English, is a ropey surface, and this is very common in Hawaii. Uh, it looks like rope, doesn't it? This basalt, it looks like rope, and so if the lava cools before the gases can escape, then you get pohoihoi. If the gases escape, you get ah, uh, uh. so pohoihoi and ah. Uh, uh, are formed by shield volcanoes, mafic volcanoes. They're not dangerous. They are the biggest volcanoes that there are in nature. Third type of volcano we want to look at is called a cinder cone. Cinder cones are much smaller than composite or shield volcanoes. And they got a little crater on top. They're the steepest volcanoes. This is what they look like. Shield volcano is much larger. Composite is lar way larger than a cinder cone. And the big thing about these cinder cones is they're made of glassy shards, usually scoria. And there's a crater on top. Shield volcanoes can erupt for millions of years. Composite volcanoes can erupt for millions of years. So the form a composite or shield volcano could it could take hundreds of thousands or millions of years to form that volcano. Cinder cone, on the other hand, can form in days or even at the most weeks. So it it's just a a small, steep sided volcano made of scoria with a crater on top. That's called a cinder cone. Um, next thing we want to look at is a lava dome. It's the fourth type of volcano you want to remember is a lava dome. Lava domes are made of obsidian. That's glass. They have a glassy texture. And you probably remember that obsidian cools immediately because it cooled so fast that there, were no time, there was no time for crystals to grow. Lava domes are the smallest of your volcanoes. Here you can see a lava dome growing inside. They usually grow inside of a composite volcano. It's like a little wart that is growing in it here in the in the summit of Mount St. Helens. You can see all the hot gases coming out. This is not a good sign, ladies and gentlemen. This indicates that Mount St. Helens is going to erupt again soon because you have these hot gases coming out of these out of the lava dome. These hot gases coming out are called fumaroles. I'll spell that for you. A fumarole. 
when you see fumaroles, that means that um, hot gases are building up under the volcano. So what a lava dome indicates is that there's going to be a new volcanic eruption soon. Another one um, is forming in Mat Count Katmai in Alaska. So that, that one, that stratovolcano, that composite volcano, last erupted in 1912. It's getting ready to erupt again. We're carefully monitoring both of these lava domes. Those are the four kinds of volcanoes. Whatever you do, don't forget, composite volcanoes form from felsic lava. That's why they're so explosive. And here's the next thing we want to learn about a caldera. C-A-L-D-E-R-A. -E what is a caldera? Well, when a composite vol volcanoes are going to erupt many times over their lifetime, which could be millions of years. But when there's such a big eruption that the volcano collapses and makes a crater, that's what we call a caldera. So a caldera is a big crater left from the collapse of a composite volcano. And that collapse makes a big crater in the ground, like this caldera here, monitored by the U.S. Geological S Survey. You can take a look here. It's a big crater in the ground. One of the most famous calderas out west is this one here called Crater Lake. There were, it, it, this caldera formed, and then um, over tens of thousands of years of heavy rainfall in the Pacific Northwest, it got filled with water. And that's this is called Crater Lake in Oregon. And you can see a little cinder cone here, too. That's called Wizard Island. Geo volcanoes, don't forget they're made of basalt, mafic lavas of low viscosity, the largest volcanoes known to science. In Hawaii, we have many shield volcanoes, such as Kilauea. Here you can see this road's getting covered by the, this basaltic lava. We have um, Mount Loa, too. There are some good things that come out of volcanoes, too. You might think of the death and destruction, but there's good things, too, and we'll talk about it. But here's your pohoihoi associated with your shield volcanoes. What good things can you get out of a volcano? You get excellent soil. So after Mount St. Helens erupted, the ash uh, covered up farms, and many farmers were in dismay. They thought their crops were ruined. But actually, they mixed that ash with the soil and that made a very productive soil. They had the best crops in, in, in generations after that eruption. The basaltic uh, rock um, for, uh, will produce um, volcanic soils off of shield volcanoes which are excellent for growing coffee and macadamia nuts. So there are advantages of the that we do get from volcanoes. We get excellent agriculture uh, pro productivity. Here's your composite volcano, another one here over Tacoma, Washington, Mount Rainier. We're monitoring all of these composite volcanoes to see if they're going to erupt. Famous one in Japan, Mount Fuji, another composite volcano. Japan gets lots of volcanoes. Here's a lava dome made of obsidian in the crater on the top of Mount St. Helens. And you can see the fumarole, indicating that it's going to erupt soon. Here's a cinder cone in Arizona. So how do volca volcanologists uh, go about monitoring volcanoes. Well, if you're a volcanologist, uh, your job might be to, uh, you, you will work either in Alaska or the Pacific Northwest because that's where we have active vol volcanism. And you need to predict when the next volcano, volcanic eruption is going to occur. We get composite volcanoes in Alaska and the Pacific Northwest. So we must predict them to save lives so we can warn the public ahead of time. 
We don't want these new AR dons and these Lahars and Lapilli to kill people. So how do we do it? Well, the way we do it, oh, by the way, pyroclastic flows are also another name for new AR dong. Pyroclastic flows. So let me show you how we monitor volcanoes. We're good. We're, we're later on. We'll talk about earthquakes, and it's hard to predict earthquakes, but it's much easier to uh, monitor volcanoes. Here you can see some of the things that we we use. Here you are. Um, you just got your degree, and you're monitoring this volcano. What are you going to look for? Well, look for any change in shape of the mountain. And we could actually measure changes in shape to less than a millimeter, the thickness of a dime, by using GPS sensors and surveying equipment. What else can we use that will tell us the earth, that a volcanic eruption is going to occur soon? Seismic activity. That means shaking of the ground. Little earthquakes. When the magma pushes up, it's going to stress out the ground and it's going to cause little earthquakes to occur. We can record those earthquakes using devices called seismographs. So before a big volcanic eruption, we're going to get lots of seismic activity. We're also going to see lots of these fumaroles, hot gases coming out. We can monitor them using, using equipment. So changes in shape in the mountain, earthquakes, and gas emissions all can be used to determine when that volcano is going to erupt. And volcanologists working for the U.S. Geological Survey, that's what they do. Okay, that's it for this chapter, and um, I'll see you next time.